In this video, we're going to look at the four different types of delivery. When you stand up to present in a classroom or in a professional setting, you have to decide how you're going to come across. We're going to look at the four different styles and look at the ups and the downs of each of them. Let's get into the details. Hello again friends, Alex Lyon here, and if you've never subscribed to this channel, Communication Coach, it's here to help you increase your impact so you can lead the people around you to higher levels of excellence. And a big part of leadership is standing up and presenting. And when you stand up, you have to decide what your approach is going to be. So we're going to talk about the four types of delivery that you can choose from to deliver your next presentation. We're going to start with one of my least favorite and we'll end on the fourth one with my favorite, the one I recommend. So first of all, reading is the first approach that you could take to delivering a presentation. I do not recommend reading your presentation word for word. However, this approach is pretty straightforward. You write out your entire presentation and you read it. Now let me ask you this. Do you like it when you see a presenter and they're reading their presentation the whole time word for word? Chances are you don't enjoy it very much and neither does anybody else. Now, there are certain situations where reading might help you and you might need to use it. If you're in an extremely formal situation like a graduation ceremony or you're giving a toast at a wedding, you might want to write that out word for word. But there are rare occasions where you'll be asked and expected to do this. Most commonly, you see people do it because they just want to fall back on something and know what they're going to say. So what they'll do is they'll write out their entire thing almost like a paper and they'll just read their paper or they'll put every single word on their PowerPoint and they'll turn and look at the PowerPoint the whole time and read that. And audiences generally don't respond well to this style because there's almost no engagement with the audience. So I wouldn't recommend it, but it can come in handy if you have a really formal situation and your presentation or your speech is very short. The next approach is memorizing. This is a little bit like reading, except that you practice it so much, you have literally memorized it word for word. So you're not tied to your paper. You can look up quite a bit, but every single word and every single phrase is set in place. This can also sound very wooden. There's a scene from a movie called Despicable Me where Gru's daughter is memorizing a poem and she sounds pretty robotic. Okay, she kisses my boobos, she braids my hair. We love your mothers everywhere. Now, if you're memorizing a poem and it's really short, of course, you might want to get every word exactly right. But there are very few occasions, again, where you're going to be asked to memorize something because it sounds stiff and it sounds like there's no humanity in it, there's no emotion, and there's no connection with your listeners. The other approach that you might take is impromptu. That's the third style or type of delivery. Impromptu is where you are given very little time to prepare and you use almost no notes, very limited notes. There are impromptu competitions at the college level and the college speaking circuit, for example, where people will compete in this impromptu category. They're given a little quotation and about two minutes to sketch out just a few points and then they're expected to speak for about five to seven minutes. This is actually a skill that I believe is worth developing. If you're a public speaking teacher or anybody you know is trying to get you to speak more impromptu, I suggest you lean into this and practice as much as you can. Very frequently, this is useful in professional settings where someone will just turn to you and say at a meeting, hey, Aaron, in a couple of minutes, I would love to hear an update about how things are going in your department. And very quickly, Aaron is going to take her pencil and start jotting down a couple of notes and then the leader calls back on that person and then they're expected to talk for a couple of minutes about how things are going. So an impromptu approach is a great way to practice presenting. You won't be expected to do it all that often, but it is a skill that will come in handy. And the fourth type or approach to delivery is extemporaneous, and this is my favorite. This is where the speaker speaks from an outline that's researched and put together. They have practiced and then they deliver in a conversational style. So when you're practicing extemporaneously behind the scenes, you're not trying to say it exactly the same every single time you go through it. You're using a variety of ways to express the same ideas, but then when you finally deliver it, you've practiced it so much in so many slightly different ways that you can just have a structured conversation with your listeners. And one of the great benefits of this is that when you're looking up, because you're not on your notes, you can connect with people with eye contact, you can adapt to their nonverbals, and this is a really scalable skill. This is a skill 
that you can take into professional settings, into the community, you can continue to do it in academic settings. Extemporaneous speaking is really the main way that you will be expected to speak in the future. In fact, for the rest of your life, anytime you get up, you should go to, as your first option, if you can, an extemporaneous approach. So question of the day, what's your favorite approach? What's your go-to approach to delivery style? I don't know that it's necessarily the one that you should be doing, but what do you fall back on? What's your favorite one to use? I would love to hear your comments in that section below. So thanks, God bless, and I will see you in the next video.